In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can set up a static website or blog using Hugo. So I've tried out a few different static site generators before, such as Jekyll and Hexo, and by far and above, I prefer Hugo simply because it's really fast and easy to set up. Uh, the caveat for that is that you do need to have Go installed on your machine, uh, but I'll take you through some of the steps that you need to do that, and then we'll create a simple blog and actually install a theme as well. So uh, the first thing, as I mentioned, is you need to have the Go programming language installed on your computer and depending on what type of computer you've got this might differ. Uh, for Mac it's pretty easy. Uh, you can use the uh, Homebrew installer to install that with just uh, brew install go uh, or there is a binary on the website where you can download and install that and that's what you'll need to do with Windows as well as to come to the Go website and actually download that and get going. Uh, but after that, uh, you'll actually need to install Hugo as well, which is a separate program that relies on the Go language. And again, macOS, dead simple. You can simply run brew install Hugo. Uh, but if you're on Windows, uh, then you need to do a little bit of extra work. Uh, there are some pre-built binaries as well that you can download, but you can also install them with uh, one of the package managers should you have them. So a little bit more setup to go if you've got uh, a Windows setup. But let's crack on and actually create a, a site with Hugo. Uh, so once you've got Go and Hugo installed, you can simply uh, type in Hugo new site and then just give it a site name. So we'll say uh, Hugo demo. Uh, as you can see, it's blazingly quick to get everything set up. Uh, but what that will have done is create a, a new directory for us uh, it's called Hugo Demo, and it will have all of the required stuff that uh, Hugo needs to actually get our site up and running. So let's just open that up in Visual Studio Code. And I'll show you a little bit about what that's created in just a moment. But uh, just to get us up and running, if we open up a new terminal window, uh, we can actually serve our site straight away uh, using Hugo space server. Uh, and there are a few different parameters you can pass in, such as you can build any draft posts that haven't been created yet. Um, but I'm just going to leave it as it is at the moment. And you can see straight away that it's uh, rendered a uh, server for us to actually view our site. So if we open up that in a browser, I'll just grab the URL here and load it up in Chrome. You can see we get this nasty page not found uh, message at the moment and the reason for that is A, we've got no content and B, we've not actually installed a theme. So uh, that's probably the first thing that you'll want to do is get a theme set up because then you can start styling uh, the pages and stuff before you start adding all of your blog posts in. Um, but what we can do is if we go over to the uh, uh, Hugo website, there's themes.gohugo.io and they're not the best quality themes to be fair, they're not the best quality examples of what you could do, uh, but they are all free so it's a good starting point just to get uh, uh, your feet wet in terms of uh, starting up with Hugo. So let's uh, have a look at this uh, theme here called Paper. So really quite a simple site um, but it'll just get us uh, up and running on our uh, example uh, local Hugo site that we've got running. So with all the themes, the way they work is they're actually uh, usually uh, provided in a uh, Git repository. Uh, and this one is exactly the same. So we can go over here to GitHub for this uh, particular uh, theme that we're looking at. And usually the theme will give you some instructions on how to install it. It can either be installed as a Git sub-module, uh, which is really handy because you can then uh, get automatic updates for those themes as they go through. Uh, but it's a little bit fle less flexible in terms of uh, making customizations directly to the theme if you want to do that. Um, but uh, and that's what we're going to do with this particular theme here. So you can see they've provided you with the, the URL and, and telling you to put uh, this as a sub-module to your project. Um, but I'm not actually going to do that. I'm actually going to clone this into our local themes directory for Hugo uh, so that we can use, we can have a look at this, how this theme is set up. Uh, but normally you'd probably want to do it as a, a sub-module. Uh, so let's go back over to Visual Studio Code and just stop the server for a moment. So I'm going to say git clone and that repository. Uh, and you can see it's going to put it into the themes folder, which is currently empty uh, under the name of paper. So we'll do that. And all it's going to do really is all the files that we just saw on GitHub a moment ago, it's going to put them into uh, this uh, themes folder under the name of paper. Uh, so we just need to tell our Hugo, our local Hugo instance, that we're using this theme. So to do that, we go over to this uh, config.toml file. Uh, and all we do is say we put theme. And then it's just the name of the theme, the directory that that's been installed into. So here we've got paper. And if we just go and run the server uh, one more time, 
make sure we get the right address because that's probably a bit updated now. And go over here. You can see we've got our theme up and running and it's provided us with a basic setup for the website as well. So we've got uh, obviously the header, some background uh, styling and so forth like that. Uh, we've got a menu, I'm not sure what's supposed to be in there, probably the categories and things will appear in there when we add more uh, some more content later on. Um, but that's just a, a simple way just to get a theme up and running. Uh, and we're now in a position where we can uh, add some content into our Hugo site and we should start seeing it appearing on here. Uh, but before we do that, let's just go back over to Visual Studio Code just to explain a little bit about what that theme has done. So the way the Hugo themes work is they have um, the layouts directory, which is where you put in all of the HTML markup that you want to appear in certain parts of your site. So uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail in this tutorial. Maybe we'll do another tutorial on, on creating themes. Um, but you can see here uh, this base of... Uh, document that we've got at the uh, default layer is basically all of the setup for uh, any pages that are loaded on the site and if you scroll down you'll probably see yeah we've got like a HTML tag and then following on that from a body tag and you can see this is how the actual pages are constructed using this uh, markup that's provided in here with all of the uh, templating that's available and that's why when we first loaded up our Hugo site we got page not found is because none of this content was here and Hugo didn't know how to actually had to render any of the uh, content uh, that we may have in our site uh, in, until this theme has been loaded up. So uh, that's just ex an explanation of uh, how the uh, themes will allow us to render the pages uh, on our site. So we actually want to add some content on there now. So uh, as mentioned at the start of the tutorial, you can use this to make a simple blog. Maybe you've got a technical blog or you're blogging about what you're learning uh, in terms of coding or it could be anything else. It could just be a static site that you're uh, building for some reason. So if you want to add content into your site, you put stuff into this content folder. And the way you can do that, it, again, is using the command line. So we can say Hugo new uh, posts. So all of the posts directory that will be uh, used for blog content uh, can be included in here. And we just give our blog uh, post a name. So we'll just say, hello world. And if we just leave it at that, you'll probably, you will get an, an error because it won't know how to actually, uh, what type of content you're generating. Uh, but by default, uh, most of the Hugo themes and setups will have uh, uh, support for Markdown. So if we just put the MD extension on there, uh, you'll see it'll create a Markdown file in there. And a couple of things have been done automatically for us. We've got a title. Uh, it's put the timestamp of when this was created. And it's also set it to draft. Uh, which I'm just going to remove for the moment because we want this to appear on the site as soon as possible. And then it's just a case of putting some markdown in here so we can put some text, make it into a heading, and you can even put some code blocks in here as well. Again, useful if you're kind of blogging about your coding journey. So let's just put something in here. Hello world. Oops. And again, you can put anything else in that uh, blog post. So once you've created your Markdown, uh, Hugo will automatically look in that content folder and generate all of the HTML pages and uh, categories that are necessary um, uh, for this particular post. So let's just run Hugo again by just saying Hugo server. And again, it's changed the URL, uh, port number that the uh, page is running on. So let's just go and update that. But if you have a look at our site now, we've got our blog post appearing, Hello World, and on this homepage for this particular theme, it's just listing out uh, the title of the blog post and when it was created. Uh, but we can actually click on that and have a look at what we've uh, had, uh, what we wrote in our blog post. So here we've got a he heading level one tag, and then we've got that uh, code block that we created uh, in the markdown as well. So there you go, we've got our first blog post set up in our Hugo uh, site. And that's just a quick overview of how to get Hugo installed on your machine, uh, how to get a new site installed, and also how to register a theme for your site. Uh, and we've also seen how to create a new blog post as well. So you could actually now uh, publish that site uh, to GitHub pages or somewhere like that if you're writing your own technical blog. Uh, but I'll leave it for there for this tutorial. We'll probably do some more tutorials on how to do more advanced stuff, uh, how to work with categories and tags, for example, uh, and how we can actually get that site published onto a server as well. Uh, but that's it for this tutorial. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.